Got it? Welcome, everybody. It's, uh, it's really interesting that it's been five years since uh, I stood here about this time um, and had some, some time to reflect on the last five years since the bowl game, and uh, we've accomplished a lot. And I'm really proud of the staff, and I'm proud of the coaches. And after one game, I, I shouldn't ever be held accountable for what I say after a game, especially when we lose, because I'm mad and say stupid stuff. But uh, after one game, I said eight and nine has been pretty good around here, and it has. It's not our expectation. It's the expectation of a lot of places. But uh, starting nine and one, we need to finish better. Starting six and zero oh and tenth in the country, that's what we wanted. We need to finish better. So we've got to um, uncover every little stone and, and look at everything we're doing to try to figure out how we can get better and, and how we can finish stronger because we're, we're starting well, uh, but we've got to finish well. And, and, and that's key, and, and everything we're focused on now is, is, is doing that um, and getting everybody aligned. We, we've had... Uh, when you win three games one year and two games the next year, and then you win seven, the bowl game, everybody's on board. Then you go to the Orange Bowl and everybody's on board. And then you have a bad year, and, and some people jumped off. And then we've had the, the good starts and the bad finishes, um, and, and we haven't played well at the end of the year. So um, I, I, I thought about the Cowboys last night. They've won 12 games, and they didn't finish well. So uh, a lot of their fans are mad today. That's, that's fair. And, and that's just part of, of what you live with, um, because I'm I'm mad too with the way we're way we're finishing. So, um, we uh, Coach Royal made a statement when I first got to Texas. I said, Coach, what do you have to do to win at Texas and win big? Because we were four and seven the year before we got there. And he said, This place is like a box of BBs, and, and ours is too. And he said, The BBs have been scattered. And he said, Your job is to get the BBs back in the in the box, and get everybody aligned, and get everybody headed in the right direction. And, and that's what we've got to do right now. And you, you start looking at uh, my 35 years as a head coach, there's been more changes the last two years than the first probably 45 years I coached. It's been unbelievable with uh, transfer portal, uh, tampering, uh, NIL, uh, the changes that have brought to college football. Uh, I, I mean, you, you couldn't have imagined three years ago these things actually happening and being put in, put in place. We, we don't even talk about amateurism anymore. We're, we're headed toward an NFL model, and uh, we're in the NFL model right now without guidelines. So I, I, I look forward to the day that we have guidelines and, and that we're more like the NFL and, and that uh, there's probably going to be a salary cap and, and guys are going to get paid through universities at some point uh, beyond their scholarships. and, and um, then they've got to figure out the tampering piece. So there's some things that are, are out there. The, the game's still great. The guys that play it are, are wonderful. They didn't ask for any of this. Um, so when people get mad at players saying, oh, they just want money now, I, they didn't ask for this. Uh, we as adults are the ones that put this model forward. Uh, so that's not, that's not fair for the players. Uh, what we all do have to do, though, is understand that now uh, one of the number one things is uh, NIL. It's real. It's here. Um, it's something that we all have to embrace. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, I'm asking our fans to jump on board, uh, whether it's our, our websites, our grassroots fans, our, our season ticket holders, our alumni association, all North Carolina fans need to align and, and get on board because it's, it's, uh, uh, it's here, it's real, uh, and it's fair. And, and our guys need to be treated uh, to, to the same opportunities with NIL like everybody else in the country. This morning we started a Hold the Line Hills for Life membership campaign. And that's to ask everybody out there that's a North Carolina fan to step up and help us. Regardless of how small or how big, uh, we need your help in NIL. Hills for Life's done a great job. Um, they got us started, but it needs to get bigger and better fast. And, and that's what we've got to do moving forward. So uh, the Hold the Line campaign is one that Hills for Life and, and, and the, the administration, everybody's talked about. We're asking every Tar Heel fan to secure a membership on, on the Hills for Life website, make a contribution. 
Uh, and that includes, as we said, Rams Club members, season ticket holders, because uh, uh, fans from all over the country, because every dollar does make a difference. And this opportunity for our fans is a, a vested interest in our program. It's a way for everybody to help and everybody to be involved. We've got to be more inclusive. We've got to be aligned and we've got to be inclusive and we've got to have a plan moving forward uh, and we've got to make that plan work because this is, this is modern day college football as, as we go through it. So, uh, and without a strong collective, uh, we can't compete like our fans want to, like our expectations are. If we want to win more than that eight or nine uh, then we've got to continue to, to do a great job uh, through our NIL programs and opportunities for these kids so we can get better players. It's just, uh, it's just bottom line. Um, the overall goal for 2024 is to have 5,000 members and, and raise 5 million plus. And, and that's something that we, we've got to start with today. And, and we're off to a good start, uh, I was told from this morning. Um, but we've got to have that in place by next season. And then you've got to continue to have it grow and make it sustainable. Because that's what we're, we're hearing from our players on our team. Uh, number one, you've got to be able to get players here. Number two, you've got to be able to, to uh, uh, retain your um, roster. Because people are coming after your players. And they're actually calling them and offering them money to leave. So, <clears throat> so we've got to be able to have a program that they, they love it here. We got to have a program and such that they want to stay, and and that's uh, that's very very important. So, uh, and I strongly believe that we can do this, and I strongly believe that we'll have a it'll have a massive impact on UNC football and help us get past that eight and nine wins that we we kind of hit the wall with, um, because we we've been there for years, and and with the uh, college football playoffs starting next year, it's a great time for us to take another major step. And, and, and be a contender nationally, uh, which is what we expected to do when we came back. And I know our fan base will uh, react immediately, and I know they're going to respond and step up because we've got great fans here, and that's what they do. And, and when our stadium's full, uh, it's as powerful as any. Um, and, and when we ask our fans to step up, they do. And, and we're asking you as fans today to step up and, and start being involved with NIL, with our collective, uh, with Hills for Life, and, and make a difference in this program. Um, we have uh, 30 newcomers that are coming in. Uh, at one point, you couldn't have anybody come as a January admit. And then all of a sudden, you'd get three or four. And that was always tough for them because they didn't have many friends, they didn't have their class with them. And then last year, we got 10 or 12. Um, then we, we got to 20 because it was 10 transfers and, and 10 of the high school guys. This year we've got 20 early enrollees. I'll go through them very quickly uh, that are high school guys. Uh, Daniel Anderson uh, will play Jack. Uh, Aiden Banfield uh, will play offensive line. Khalil Conley will play defensive back. Zion Ferguson will play defensive back. Uh, they're all here. Uh, running back Davion Goss will play, um, he'll play running back. Wide receiver, uh, Javarius, we call him Vari Green, um, is, is here. A lot of these guys came to bowl practice, uh, like Vari and Aiden Banfield just came to the game, uh, but, and some are, are here for the first time. Offensive lineman, Desmond Jackson, um, tight end, Timmy Lawson, who had a knee injury in, in the fall, will not participate in spring practice, but he'll be here to rehab and learn what to do. Um, Mike Merdinger, a quarterback. Uh, Janai, and it's J-A-N-I. Uh, so it's Janai. Uh, Norwood will play in the offensive line. Uh, defensive back, Jaden Patterson. Offensive line, Andrew Rosinski, and he actually played center in, in the All-Star game. He never played center before, and he did really well. Wide receiver, Jordan Ship. Uh, another Jack position player, Curtis Simpson. Wide receiver, Alex Taylor. Uh, defensive back, Jalen Thompson. Tight end, Ryan Ward. Um, defensive back, Ty White. Linebacker, Ashton Woods. Defensive back, Malcolm Ziegler. And uh, all of those guys are in class, they're in school, they'll be here for spring practice. 
and a lot of those guys got to practice 10 days with us in, in the uh, bowl practice, which was really fun to watch them. And we actually kept the guys uh, 15 minutes after bowl practice. They'd practice with us for the hour and a half, and then we'd keep them 15 minutes afterwards so they'd have extra work. There are three preferred walk-ons, Hayes Galloway's an offensive lineman, that's Lonnie's son, offensive lineman Zach Gluckman, and uh, quarterback DJ Mazzone. Uh, so those guys are, are here and in school and ready to go. And then we have six transfers at this point in school. Um, running back Darwin Barlow, um, transferred from USC. Uh, offensive line uh, from Georgia, Austin Blasky. Austin actually practiced with us in bowl practice. Uh, defensive back Jakeem Harris from NC State. Um, Tight end Jake Johnson from Texas A&M and his brother Max Johnson from Texas A&M. And then offensive lineman Howard Sampson um, who is transferring in from North Texas and Coach Clements actually coached him at North Texas and really excited about him. He's, uh, he's about 6'8", um, 320 or something. He's a, he's a real presence in that offensive line. So. Uh, those guys are all in school. They're doing well. So that's three preferred walk-ons and six transfers. And then we, unusual for us, but we have one uh, junior college transfer. And his name is uh, Tyran Stewart. He's a defensive back. He uh, was from a really small high school in Mississippi. And his team wasn't very good. They didn't get a lot of, of, of coverage. So he actually went to junior college as a qualifier and had like a 3.4 grade point average. Um, so he's transferring in, he's here, and he'll be ready to start spring practice soon. Um, this is the highest ranked group of high school guys that we've ever signed academically. Uh, we're really, really proud of them. Uh, just about all these guys are over a 3.0. Um, so we're, we're excited about this class and it, it changes. When you think about uh, what there's, uh, 27, 28 are these guys that are new. That, that's a, a huge part of your 85. So it changes your team every year. And, and that's what's so different than in our past. You, you might bring in 25, now you're bringing in uh, a lot more than that to, uh, to look at it. We're still looking at offensive line uh, in the portal and we're still looking at uh, defensive line in the portal. Adams County, what we got, Adam, you're 20. Um, 26, 20, 27 transfers uh, along with three preferred walk-ons. So you got 30 new guys that'll be here for spring practice, which is pretty amazing when you start looking at, at change. And then you'll have more come in, in in June. I think there's six or seven more maybe. Um, plus, as I said, we'd like to have another defensive lineman, another offensive lineman from the transfer portal. Anybody that else that you bring over the portal, they would be your junior now, right? Yes. We have already started school, so it's too late for us to add somebody to school right now. We can sign them um, because they, they have been, if they were in the portal, we can still sign them. Uh, we had some guys in this weekend, but they can't come until their school's out. So it's just like the high school guys coming to bowl practice. They have to get an email from their school, from their university that says, you've either finished the semester or you're a grad. Um, so you can transfer and then they can come that day. They can come the next day and, and they can actually come here and eat, work out, get their um, equipment and all that stuff before they enroll at school. That's a change with the NCAA as well. And then most of them um, end up spending the, the second semester with us because they're too late to get in the first semester. So are they taking the classes at their previous school or are they just not taking they're, they're in, at their previous school. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yes, and that's why they have to stay the semester or they would have come in, in January. So that's very player friendly. Yes, very, very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Okay. Um, and we can, any questions about the transfers? What we will do at some point, Jeremy, will have them available for you, the ones you haven't already talked to, uh, whether it's, he'll have a, a time for the high school guys and he'll have a time for the the transfers and the grad transfers and uh, Pat's going to start sending out video uh, of the the transfers for sure uh, and then he'll have that available on the day that you talk to them 
um, if, if you would like to do that. Um, any other questions before I go to our, our, our next part of the agenda? Uh, just to clarify, with the, of the early enrollees, did you say that the student Lawson had to be in here? Yes. Okay. I, uh, Jeremy, is that the only one that will not be involved in spring practice? Yes, everybody else will be involved in spring on this list other than uh, Timmy. And he can probably run some because he got hurt early in the fall and he's, he's got full uh, bend in his knee right now, uh, but he, he will probably not be in contact, I wouldn't think. To clarify on Tim, wasn't the original plan he wasn't gonna roll early because he's a baseball player, but because the injury he wants to rehab here, yes. instead of rehabbing back home? Yes. Okay. He, he, he is a, a potential pro baseball player, will play with our baseball team here. He cannot this spring because of his knee. He would have stayed and played with his baseball team through the spring if he had been healthy enough. Since he got hurt, his family thought it would be better for him to come here, rehab, learn what to do, and, and be more ready for the fall. And usually those are nine to 12 months, so he'll be close probably to fall. Matt, the last couple of years, No, we've kept the philosophy. If a young guy's unhappy because he's not playing enough, then we want to help him get somewhere else. And, and uh, we've done, a, our coaches have done an unbelievable job of helping place guys. Um, we still, we, we've signed, I think, 27 high school guys, maybe 26 and one junior college guy. It's, it's close there. Um, so we're still trying to do it with high school guys and then use the portal to, to help plug in a few positions. Um, but, I mean, a lot of people aren't signing many high school guys anymore. They just absolutely are going portal completely. And it, it's gonna change uh, the dynamics of, of teams. Uh, all my teammates are buddies of mine now. If you got guys that are changing, you're changing 30 or 40 guys every year, you're not gonna know who your teammates were and you're not gonna grow up with them. So we're trying to, to keep it as much like it has been in the past as we can and, and still compete at the highest level. Anything else? Okay, we, uh, we, we've been really good on offense for the last five years. We've been inconsistent on defense. And um, I, I've read somewhere where we've been inconsistent on defense since 2008. We just haven't been consistently good. Um, I love Gene Chiswick and Tim Cross. They're two of uh, my great friends. They're two of the nicest people. They're, uh, they have tremendous faith. They're great fathers. They're great husbands. Um, Gene Chiswick was involved with North Carolina football for four seasons. He had an 11 win season, a nine win season, and two eight win seasons. So we all have to thank him for all he did because he's done some great things here. One of the best seasons we've ever had he was involved with as our defensive coordinator. Tim Cross has done a lot of great things for the last five years. And, and, and sitting down with, with Gene specifically, um, we, we both decided that it was best to, to just move in a different direction. And, and he totally was on board. Um, so these are, these are good people. I think when people want this guy fired or want that guy fired, they forget they're human beings. This, we're not playing with video games here. Um, but we're, we're in a production business. And, and we understand that as, as we're going through with it. Um, so when you start looking, uh, uh, we had the entire defensive staff um, interviewing coaches. And when we started looking at, at what we wanted, uh, we wanted somebody that's gonna be aggressive, somebody that's gonna be simple, uh, somebody that's going to create havoc, somebody that's going to uh, force tackles for loss, somebody that's going to um, get sacks, um, so uh, we, we looked at uh, probably five people that, that we interviewed, and, and uh, the one that kept popping up to all of us um, was uh, Jeff Collins. Um, experienced as a defensive coordinator at, at uh, a lot of different places, but specifically did a great job at Mississippi State uh, and at Florida. Uh, been a head coach at Temple and Georgia Tech, so he gets it. A tremendous recruiter, very passionate. Uh, you start looking at, at what Jeff has done 
27 year coaching veteran, six years as a head coach, 11 years as a defensive coordinator, top notch recruiter, um, produced more than three dozen NFL players. Uh, why do you hire him? If you look at his, his record as a, a defensive coordinator, it's as good as anybody in the country. And he's doing exactly what we want. He's fiery, he's got an aggressive style, uh, and he attacks. And, and that's very, very important to us. Uh, we were so lucky that when Coach Chiswick brought in Ted Monachino uh, that he couldn't coach on the field, but we were able to watch him all year and his relationship with the players. So then you've got a 33-year veteran, um, and he's coached at all levels, 16 years in the NFL, great track record um, with a defensive line and pass rushers, Terrell Suggs, Khalil Mack, Elvis Dummerville, C.J. Mosley, he, he's uh, coached Ray Lewis, won a Super Bowl, defensive coordinator in the NFL. Uh, we're so lucky um, to have both of these guys. Um, but with Ted, he was familiar with our team. Um, his family's familiar with our team. The players all know him, um, and, and they're very, very excited about him moving forward. And he was involved with a lot of the, the recruiting in the transition period. So uh, very excited about, uh, about both of these guys uh, leading our defense moving forward. Any questions before I get them up here? You mentioned attacking a lot with Coach Collins. Uh, how much of that is just you seem to have a change of personality, persona, approach, culture on defense? I think when you're, you, you don't want to go back and talk about what wasn't good, that's not fair. Those guys aren't here to defend themselves. But what you want to do is talk about what you'd like to do moving forward. And, um, and I've coached against Jeff. I know what he does, and, and I know he, he makes it very, very difficult for offensive football. Um, and it was interesting. We had six hours with him on Zoom two different times. The entire staff, and, uh, and like Ted, for instance, was sitting there in the first 10 minutes. We had some of the guys were in person, and, and Jeff was on Zoom, and, and it, I told the coaches, I said, it's going to be hard for him to live up to on a Zoom. He's not going to be able to have the video like you want. He's not going to be able to... Uh, be able to be as personal with you as, as the guys are in person. He can't get on a grease board. So let's give him a break here. This is going to be tougher. In the first 10 minutes, Jeff had everybody eat out of his hands, and, and Ted texted me and said, wow, impressive. Um, so uh, all the coaches are all in. They're, they're in. Um, they came to me and said, this guy's exactly what we need. So. Um, and, and he also met with the players the other night. When they got back, I had him speak to the entire team, which he's used to because he's been a head coach. Uh, but then he stayed with the defense, and uh, they were bouncing off the walls coming out. So uh, his energy is so good. His confidence is good. Uh, but, but like Ted, he, you just look at where they've been. All the guys want to go where these two guys have been, and, and that gets their attention immediately. You know, we weren't very good on defense when we got here. We were really good on offense. And, and a lot of the offensive players have been drafted. So we're getting, we continue to get better defensive players. Jay Bateman j just got the defensive coordinator's job at Texas A&M. Um, so sometimes it's just the circumstances. And, and these jobs are hard now. You start looking at, uh, I think there were 37 uh, defensive coordinators fired this year. Hard to play defense. Hard to play defense. I'm sitting there interviewing some defensive coordinators are giving up more points than we did. <laughs> and they're highly recommended. We would have all loved them up there. <laughs> they didn't stop anybody. Um, so it's hard. Defense is hard. All the rules have made it for the offense. Um, and, and it's harder to play safety. It's harder to play corner. They spread you out so much. It's harder with tempo because they go so fast. It's harder to get calls in. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of stuff right now that's hard for defenses, and that's why I wanted a lot of experience. And, and Jeff spent the last year and a half doing nothing but sitting in his man cave studying football. He, he said his, his wife's wearing him out with 
what are you doing down there? And he said, he was looking at it. And the other thing that was very impressive with, with Jeff is he, um, he broke down all of our games. Right, saw that. And he, uh, when he was on the Zoom, he was saying, here, in the bowl game, um, uh, he said, I'm not being critical of anybody, but this, I, I, 17 looked good. He did this right, and 23 did this right. But 21, Caleb Koss came on a, a, a blitz in the end zone, and he said, that's a sack fumble and, and maybe a touchdown or a safety, uh, but you come at the wrong angle, and he gets out and makes a 16-yard run, gets a first down at least, points at the other end, so it's a 14-point swing. Um, so that showed us that he, he cared about us. He, he knew all the coaches by name. Uh, he was calling the players by name uh, and going through what he thought we did well and what we struggled with during the season. And all of us were sitting there saying, yeah, you're exactly right. So it, it wasn't a, he said, she said, be critical of. It was a, those are things we got to get fixed. Was a nice additive the fact that you guys recruit Atlanta very hard and he's very well connected down there? Yes. Uh, and uh, our players, he recruited a lot of our players. So, and, and uh, Nate McCullum was all over it. He, he was his number one guy as he was pushing forward to it. So, uh, but, but uh, Jeff turned down about eight defense coordinator job over the year he laid out, a uh, year and a half. And um, he's already had two calls since he's been here uh, to try to get him to leave. So he's, um, he, he's obviously uh, one of the best out there to, to do it. Um, and I'm even more excited about him after being around him for two or three weeks than, than I was before. And, and if you had told any of us uh, a year ago that we could get uh, Ted Monachino and Jeff Collins on the same staff with our defense, uh, everybody called us a liar. So we're really, really lucky to have both of them. Um, and and I, I'm so excited about um, getting our defense turned around. With Ted, obviously you did mention that you saw him all last year, built relationships with players, things like that. When the defensive line position opened up, when did it kind of click that, you know, you would want to kind of keep it in-house with Ted rather than, you know, bring, uh, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but, you know, why, uh, just what kind of went into the decision to just kind of keep it in-house yeah. with Ted? Very honestly, Ted's got so many opportunities to go back to the NFL, I didn't know whether he would stay or not. And he's such a good person, and he loves these kids, and he knows how close we are. That's the thing that all of our fans and, and our coaches, I'm so excited because we're so close. We just gotta, we gotta take another step. And we haven't for two years, and we've been close to that for two years. Uh, but these two guys help you take that step. And, and I'm so pumped about both of them. The, the fact that Ted would say, I love these kids. I know how close we are. I wanna be a difference maker excites me because he doesn't have to be and and uh, I didn't make a decision based on Ted that that would be totally unfair because I didn't think he'd be here um, and then after we made our decision and sat down with Ted he said sure I'll, I'll do this and I thought really so so I'm, I'm excited right, Matt, you thought it'd be a one year one year deal with absolutely uh, I'm, without question I asked you about Clyde in November didn't ask about Ted no, me neither. Me neither. Never even thought about it. So that, that's why I'm so excited. Clyde still around? Yes. Clyde actually coached uh, Brad Johnson yeah. at no Tampa way. Bay. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons I think that the Johnsons came. Uh, another reason is we're all good friends with Mark Rick, and, and they trust our program and our culture and what we're doing moving forward. Um, so, but, but Clyde's excited uh, about... Um, what he can do to help Max and Jake moving forward. I'm really hoping in February that the uh, NCAA will allow the analysts and QCs to coach and, and, yeah. and it just makes so much sense. And that would help uh, Clyde because he could actually be on the field coaching and let Chip move around a little bit more. Um, so that would help us too. Is it a waste of energy to be, to be optimistic about that? I'm sorry? Is it a waste of energy to be optimistic about that? I'm afraid so. I'm not hearing much about it, and I thought we would. I thought it was a no-brainer. We thought we were going to have it last February, and now um, it's not. There's so much talk about NIL and what we've got to do. I think it's kind of gone underground a little bit. It should make it easier, actually. It make it a whole lot easier. I just want to go back to something you said at the beginning. You talked about Coach Watt came out your five years here. And, you know, we just.
just saw Nick Saban retire, but to me it sounds like you kind of have like a plan for the future here with this with your NIL plan and hiring new coaches. I mean, what does the future look like for you here? I think uh, Jim Harbaugh handles you guys better than anybody. He said, I'm glad I got a future. And that's all he said, and everybody lets it go, so I can't figure that out. But um, I, I'm excited about spring practice. Um, I'm excited about these two guys coming in. Uh, the players are all pumped. Uh, again, we're so close. We're, we're talking about an empty stadium and two wins five years ago. And now we're talking about griping at eight and nine and an orange bowl and a, a coastal championship. So we're, we're close, man. We just got to take another step. And it's my job to figure out what that means. And I've got to have the fans to get totally on board, get aligned, uh, help us with NIL so that doesn't get us kicked back. Our recruiting hadn't been as good the last two years since NIL came in. We, we, we need to be as good at NIL as anybody in the country. And, and we, we've got fans that can do that, but we've got to be passionate about it. And, um, and, and that's just something we're, we're just, we're asking, buy the season tickets, get in those seats. We're so close. We're closer than we've ever been. Let's, let's, let's take another step, but we've got to do it together. We, we, we've got to do it. The administration is on board. Uh, Hills for Life's on board. Um, our coaches are all on board. Now we got to get uh, our fans to be totally on board. Mike, one of, the, one of the criticisms that people keep using the last couple of years is the end of the year, and that's sort of a catch-all word with culture. Like, I mean, do you think there's some sort of a culture issue that has affected you guys here? I don't know if that's something that's solved. You know, that, that's come up before. Yeah. Like, what, what, what is your response when you hear people say, oh, you know, I think they aren't involved in our program. They don't see it day to day, and they don't know what they're talking about. I'm like them. I'm looking for every little thing, too. I just don't make up words. i got to find facts, and, and that's what I'm doing every little thing. That's what Jeff's here for. That's what Ted's here for. Uh, we're looking at our off-season program. We're looking at everything in nutrition. I, I think uh, another thing that really hit all of us with, with Jeff was – talking about we got to play more players. I think we wear out at the end of the year. You can't play two linebackers. They're, they're as good as said Gray and Power are. They played 900 plays. They're worn out. And, and we've played a tougher end of the schedule than we have the beginning of the schedule. So part of it's who you play. Um, but but I, I do think we, we, we need to play. We didn't play many corners, but we had people hurt. We had people out. Um, Two years ago, we got all the defensive linemen hurt, so that was tougher. Uh, but we are going to be simpler on defense, and we're going to play a lot of players. And that, that, th those were two things that just jumped out at us with Jeff that we talk about every day in staff meetings. We haven't done a very good job of. But when he started talking, I said, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I like all of that. So, uh, but Brian Hess does a great job. He's got a tremendous staff. Um, those guys work really, really hard. We're going to go back and, and do more of the, the county fair grass drills that we were doing the first two years we were here. Then we got away from some in COVID because they left. So we're going to go back and change up our off-season program some. Uh, we're going to move spring practice back another week so we can have more time for the off-season program. Um, but but we're, we are looking at every little thing, and we're grading every little thing to make sure that whatever it is that we're missing at the end of the year, we're going to take care of and, and make sure that we don't do it again. But it's Matthew. not culture. No, I, I don't know what, I'd, I'd like for somebody to define culture that's not in a football program. It's an easy word to say, and it, it'd be really hard to define. I know what it is, but I don't think the ones that are questioning it probably do. From the first, I think, year that Yes, there's a lot of changes that may, may need to come. We're going to go by the rules. But that's why we need all Carolina guys like you to jump up and start donating the NIL. Or I'm going to check that this afternoon, see what you've thrown in there, because I know it's a, a big check. Yeah, but my, my point is that 
He changed the subject, didn't he? Wasn't that? that was good. I right? mean, fight it. Yeah, let me, let me explain. Uh, I'll try to explain this quickly because I know when Jeremy stands, that means get down, Mac. You've been up there too long. Um, <laughs> if you're recruiting the right players and they know that there's going to be opportunities after they get here, then they're still going to come legally, the ones we want. But if they, if they aren't going to be... Um, in a position where NIL takes proper care of them after they get here, then they're not gonna come. And that's, that's what you deal with. The other thing is you, you've gotta have your locker room where it, it, it's fair, because they all talk. You tell them not to talk, every one of them talk. And some of them don't even tell the truth. <coughs> they, they, they say it's a number, it's not. So I want transparency with NIL I'd love for everybody that gets a penny to have to have it public so we all know exactly what it is. Um, I do want something to be done uh, with the tampering because it's a mess and now that agents are involved, it's gonna be hard to catch anybody. Uh, but it's real and it's there and it's happening. Um, but you can't pay a guy in the transfer portal if you're not paying your guys uh, in, in the locker room. So what we've got to do is have a, a process in place like the NFL where a starter makes so much money and a, a backup would make this much and this position might make more than that, that. Everybody would understand that Drake would make more than some of our other players because of who he is. They understand that. But if some other school's making three times as much as your guys and they all know that because they all talk, then they're not going to come. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to make sure that our guys on campus are being taken care of with NIL opportunities at the highest level, and then players will still come. So you don't think that the NCAA has any trouble make or whoever it is is going to try and stop with what is really not in the spirit of the NIL? I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. People are still yeah. offering money up front. And yeah, that's, that's not what I said at all. Uh, I don't know what the, the NCAA would like for us all to go by the rules. I'm sure that's their job. Um, what they can do about it, I don't know. I, I, a lot of smart people have a lot of work to do to get this thing straightened out because it, it is a mess. Um, there's a lot of great things for NIL. And like I said, it's not the kids' fault. And there's a lot of great things. It's helping kids that need the money helping kids learn to do charity, helping kids learn to pay taxes. Um, there's a lot of positive things. Helping Ty Lee with his, his, to offset the cost with some of his, his cancer treatments. Um, they're, they're just uh, all these kids that are trying to help table with uh, charity, with uh, underprivileged kids in Orange County to eat, Habitat of Humanities. There, there's so many things that are better because of NIL. Um, we just need to get some guidelines. And that's what you're saying, Art. And, and right now, um, people say, I, I even have people around me say, well, there are no rules. No, there's rules. We've just got to figure out uh, how to make sure that if someone's not going by those rules, then we can find them. And uh, rules are going to be broken as long as there aren't consequences. There have to be consequences, and you have to be able to catch somebody. When they start firing coaches, then they're going to quit cheating. Until they do that, it, it's, it's going to be hard to corral. Anything All right. else? All right. When you've got a nickname, that means that you've done something pretty good. I present to you the Minister of Mayhem. So come on, Jeffrey. Thank you.